Okay, it is that time. This is part two of the Mars Hydro SP 3000's review. Although I'm not reviewing these lights in this video whatsoever. This is the grow experiment test, whatever you want to call it, just to basically test out these lights and see how well they do. And finally grow some cucumbers for myself. So if you want to see part one where I actually talk about these lights, go ahead and click the like right up here or at the end of the video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you what I'm going to be doing to grow uh, these cucumbers and talk about why I chose them and what they are. All right, for this grow, we're going to be keeping it simple here using this 10-gallon Rubbermaid storage container. I probably got it from one of the big box stores, although I don't really remember which one I got it from. Um, I already have the holes drilled in here because I used this for another experiment quite a while ago. I'm going to be covering up one because I'm only growing one plant, so there's only going to be one net pot in here. Um, I also get a lot of questions asking if the containers I'm using for my hydroponics are food safe or food grade. Yes, this is a food grade container, uh, well, food safe to be more specific, but if you have any questions about uh, whether or not the plastics that you're using for uh, your hydroponics or soil grows, if they're food safe, click the link up here or at the end of the video. For this grow, I'm going to be aerating the solutions, basically it's going to be kind of like a cracky semi-DWC and I'm going to be using these nutrients here. This is a powdered form nutrients. This is Veg Plus Bloom brand. And this is the RO slot, uh, soft version of it. There are other versions, but this is uh, more suitable for me since I'm using tap water. Um, I've done another video talking about this. I'm currently working on another video about this, and I've really taken, I've really taken a liking to this particular type of uh, nutrient because it's in the, in the powdered form. And not just because it's in a powder form, but because I'm getting pretty, dark, pretty decent results with it. Uh, I've been using the um, uh, General Hydroponics Flora Series over there for a lot of years and I've really had no problems with them, but since I've started using this, I'm really liking this better. This is so much easier. Um, interested in anything about this, uh, there'll be links up here or at the end of the video. <laughs> so, uh, also in the description if you're interested in this stuff, there'll be a link down there too. It'll be an affiliate link for Amazon if you want to purchase this. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on to what I'm actually growing, and that's the, um, the type of cucumber. So here is the seed packet for this particular type of cucumber. It is a diamond hybrid pickling cucumber, and it is a parthenic carpic, which means that it doesn't require any pollination for it to produce fruit, which makes things a lot easier when you're growing indoors. You don't got to worry about having to manually do it like watermelons. Uh, you know, insects would normally do that for you. This makes it a lot easier. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why I chose this. It's also a space-saving plant, so this doesn't really take up a lot of room. Like, it doesn't vine all over the place. It's more like a bush type, I would say. Uh, so that's another reason why I chose it, especially when growing in a, a grow tent. Um, it's also very fast-growing. It's 45 days in maturity, and that's kind of like growing a head of lettuce. I mean, that's very fast for a cucumber plant to grow. Uh, probably because it doesn't grow all that big, also. And you can see it's already jumping out of here. The roots are growing out. Uh, this is inert. There's no nutrients in there. It's just rock wool. And this is just a couple of days after uh, sprouting. So you can see it really wants to grow, which is why it's going to go in its container today. Uh, because it's a pickling cucumber, they don't grow very big. It's only four to five inches in length. And they're for eating or pickling. These apparently taste pretty good either way. Uh, some people don't really like to use pickling cucumbers if they want to chop them up for sales and stuff like that, just as a preference. But uh, these apparently are either way. They're good, they're good either way, which I'll be doing both anyways, but mainly just eating them, not pickling them. Uh, and the last reason why I chose this is also because it is a disease resistant. So it's, it's resistant to a certain type of virus. I don't remember which one, um, but it's a cucumber virus of some type. And it's also resistant to downy and powdery mildew, uh, which is very important to me because in hydroponics, indoors in a grow tent, uh, it would be very easy for a plant that is prone to powdery mildew, like cucumbers or pumpkins, um, because the there's a lot of moisture, there's a lot more humidity in the air, generally speaking, and the in hydroponics, the leaves, especially like tomato plants, they tend to retain a lot of droplets, and you really you can combat that with more airflow, but it's still very difficult. So it's a good idea if you can get a plant that's resistant to mildew, especially if you're growing inside and using hydroponics to grow it. Well, I guess it doesn't matter, soil or hydroponics. So we're gonna get to growing this and uh, we'll check back in a little bit here. Okay, so now it's time to place the little plant into its home for the next month and a half to two months. And uh, one more thing I almost forgot, this is a 
the last reason why I chose this cucumber variety is because it's also seedless uh, or burpless. And you see these nice white roots? Uh, the white balance on the camera might change, but uh, that's how you know your roots are healthy. They're nice and white, and they actually smell kind of like a sweet watermelon. So I'm not saying all roots smell like that, but I smell a lot of uh, roots, especially from seedlings, and if they have that particular scent to them, you know you're doing good. So we're going to go ahead and put it in there, cover up that hole, and we'll come back in a bit. All right, it's been three and a half weeks since the last segment of this video, and you can see this is how the plant is growing. Uh, it's got some deficiencies developing. You can see here the leaves aren't quite as green. There's some yellowing between the veins. Uh, I got to do a nutrient change out in this uh, reservoir to correct that. But uh, even so, we still got cucumbers growing. You can see one's right there. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, the lights right now, I have, I have them set at 50% or just a little bit above 50% power. Um, that's putting out plenty of light in here. And this camera is dialing it down, obviously, but this is this is pretty bright, even at 50%, um, and as high as these lights are hanging. It's giving me really nice, even coverage. Um, I didn't even bother putting anything in the bottom here to allow the vines grow on, uh, because we have plenty of even coverage around all these outside edges anyways, so there's no real reason to do that. But in this segment, I think what we're gonna do here is we're going to pick one of these cucumbers. There's a couple growing there. We're going down there. There's, there's actually quite a few growing. Uh, the everywhere there's a flower pretty much you see here everywhere there's a flower like I said this is the type of plant that it is it doesn't require pollination and uh, I think they're pretty much all female flowers and everywhere there's a flower there it's going to grow a cucumber uh, if it has the nutrient resources to do so so let's pick uh, one of these here and then we'll go take a look at it and taste it all right, so here are the cucumbers that I chose to pick. There's actually quite a few growing in there. They're all kind of hidden under the leaves, and I probably should pick more of them so that I can get, let the plant produce more. But um, this is about the biggest as it's gonna get on the vine. Uh, then we got pretty much, probably the smallest one I would actually choose to pick and eat. So we're gonna cut these open and just kind of see, see what they look like. Okay, so here's what they look like cut open lengthwise. You can see there is no seeds in them just places where there would be seeds, which is exactly what I'm looking for. And uh, they smell really good. So let's take a taste of each one of these different sizes and see if there's any difference in taste uh, depending on their age. Okay, so the large one, I don't know, just tastes like a cucumber to me. It doesn't have a very strong flavor, and um, I guess that's to be expected with this pickling variety. I'll try this other one here. Um, that one tastes maybe just a little bit sweeter. Hardly a difference, but it's a little bit. There's another one just a little bit smaller than that one. Let's see if this one tastes different. It tastes about the same as the other one there. And um, now we'll taste the smallest one. Um, this is about the same as these. I think the large one had maybe the most mild flavor and then the rest of these smaller ones are all about the same. It's very mildly sweet. Uh, I did eat some chocolate before, so maybe it kind of messed up this taste test a little bit, but we'll taste more later on in this video. Okay, so it's a little while later now and I decided to make some pickles out of these pickling cucumbers, like I said I was going to do earlier in the video. Um, I'm not gonna make this a how to make pickles video necessarily, I'm just gonna go over what I did and uh, the recipe I use so that you can copy it if you want to try it because I find it to be pretty good and honestly I couldn't tell you that if this was made at home or made it uh, or bought in a store so basically this is just a 16 ounce mason jar so you can vacuum seal the lid I'll go over that in a minute uh, so the recipe that I use is very very simple you just need some distilled white vinegar uh, some peppercorn black peppercorn uh, this is just some dill weed 
And then you can add the crushed red pepper if you want to. I kind of like spicy stuff, but you don't have to add this. It'll taste about the same, just with or without the spice. Uh, this is a the food saver lid. So this is what you're gonna use to vacuum seal if you wanna do it that way. However, there you can use the cooking method and let them self seal. Um, you won't get as tight of a vacuum as you would with this, but it'll do the same thing. Uh, so basically just combine all those ingredients together. Uh, I used a half a cup of distilled vinegar and one cup of water, mix those together and just dumped in about a half a teaspoon of each of these. And that's all you really need. You don't need a whole lot. Um, as you can see here, there's some stuff floating around, but it's not really that much. So basically, once you combine them all together, um, and you slice up your pickles. And remember, if you slice up your pickles, you want to cut the ends off of them because there's an enzyme in the end. It uh, basically tells the uh, cucumber to rot. So you want to cut the ends off for, uh, if you're going to do this. You don't necessarily have to, but if you're going to store it for a longer time, it's, you probably want to do it anyways. So you put the food saver lid on top of the jar. Obviously not with this ring on here, but you'll pull a vacuum and I made this vacuum pump. This is just a bike pump. There's a vacuum gauge on here and a one-way valve. And to modify the pump, you basically just take out the, the shaft here and you flip the one-way valve upside down and then screw it on. And then you, when you pull up, the upstroke pulls a vacuum. And then you can use the gauge here to figure out how much vacuum you're pulling and, until it's done, which is about usually about like 26, 27 on the gauge there is as much as you're ever gonna get with that. So basically, when you do all that and you pull the vacuum on this, uh, that's going to suck out the air and it's going, going to um, draw the flavors and everything into the pickles. And this happens pretty instantaneously. So the way that you wanna do this, the way that I found works pretty well, is you pull the vacuum on this or the cooking away or whatever, and then shake it up with just a little bit, let it sit for maybe five minutes, come back and then pull the lid off the jar and allow the air to go right back in. And that's going to draw everything into the uh, cucumbers further. Uh, at that point, they usually, they taste pretty much just like a pickle, except usually maybe the center, depending on how thin they are, may not be quite as absorbed at that point. So then what you wanna do is pull another vacuum on it uh, and then put it in the fridge for 24 hours and then open the next day. And then by that time, they'll be completely pickled and there'll be flavors all the way through it. And I found that to be uh, pretty good and it works well for me. So I just wanted to make this segment of the video for anyone who might be interested in pickling since I am growing pickling cucumbers. Okay, I did it again. I screwed up. I missed a day, I didn't check on this. I didn't check the water levels in the container and it dried up. It wasn't completely dried up when I found it. It was still slightly moist, so the roots are still alive, so I added some water to it. Um, so technically, right now, it is still alive. Uh, it was all completely wilted, and it looked really bad, but you can see that it's not dead. Uh, it's definitely still alive. There's some new growth starting on it, but at this point, I don't think I'm going to continue with it. I did grow quite a few cucumbers. Um, I mean, you can see a bunch underneath here, all these little tiny ones, and um, you know, there's one there. There's some on the ground back there. Uh, there's one weird looking one here. But anyways, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna continue on with this. Uh, I was thinking about maybe cut, taking some cuttings and cloning it, but I got plenty more seeds. I don't see any reason to do that. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna end this particular video and we're gonna move on to something else in an upcoming video. So what I'm gonna do to test out these lights, I really wanna put them to their full potential. And what I want, what I want to try to do is grow uh, watermelons in this tent. This is a four by four because I had one of the worst years of growing watermelons outside in the summer this year. And I'll talk more about that in another video, but uh, I wasn't very successful to keep it short. And I'm going to try to grow regular watermelons in this little tent here. Obviously probably going to use a, maybe a bigger container or at least something I can have more water volume. That way I can grow watermelons without having to worry about running out of solution because this is a pretty tiny container. Uh, the, the whole size itself isn't actually that small, but I can only fill maybe about halfway because of how far the net pot sits down with this particular lid because it's a recessed lid. Uh, I have another container that's made from a different brand and the lid, is, the lid is actually raised up so you can actually put a lot more solution in there. So what I think I'll do is I maybe use one of those containers or just something larger 
or different. And I'm gonna try to go watermelons. I'm not gonna do the sugar babies. I'm gonna do just regular watermelons and see if I can grow one or two, maybe three of them in this whole tent with these lights. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.